This is Ken Hans, best storyteller in Texas. Saying of the day, the only person you have to compare yourself is yourself. Sigmund Freud said that. In other words, are you getting better? Are you doing better? And uh, that's something that uh, we all have to look at as, uh, as time marches on. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little about uh, artificial intelligence. You know, it was discovered in 1956. I didn't realize that until I got to reading some about it. But by 2019, more patents were filed in the United States Patent Office on artificial intelligence than any other thing. And that uh, there's just a lot going on in that area. They, they have artificial intelligence drives cars now. And the prediction is that by 2028, no one will be driving cars. All the cars will be self-driven. And by 2030, the trucks will be. Now, that's going to have a big impact uh, on employment. And artificial intelligence has created some jobs in the past, but it's, it's out to eliminate jobs. And uh, one of that's in fast food, uh, that they want to make it as, as easy as possible to replace employees with the artificial intelligence. That's right. Really, just at the airport in Austin, if you go out and you go to a sandwich shop there, you have to order through a key You know, there's not an individual uh, that, that's going to be taking your order. And uh, they've still got some back there in case something happens. But uh, same thing with the parking garage. You used to have a parking lot, and now it's just, you know, you got to put your credit card in there or you've already got a, a card because you park there on a regular basis. And so if, if you look at those areas, the, the one area where you have to is where there's minimum wage and, if, and it's fairly simple to replace someone. And the, the people that employ so many people, like in fast food, uh, every time they can come up with a method to eliminate someone, they do. Because the, the new person, the artificial intelligence, work 24-7 and never call in sick or hung over. And that, uh, so that, that's the reason you see a, a bigger trend everywhere they're, they're looking. There was a hotel in Nagasaki, Japan, a uh, year before last, and they came up with the deal. They'd have a, you'd have your own robot. You know, check in, and the robot would take you to the door and key and everything. But they had complaints. It, they they had some mistakes. You know, the bell bellhop robots would run into the wall every once in a while or step off a curb and fall. And, and, but the one, if you had one for your room, it'd say, I did not understand that when you snored. You know, so all night you're hearing it guess I did not understand that. And because you snort. So there's a lot of lot of potential problems. There was one group that they got cookbooks and they consolidated different cookbooks to over thirty thousand recipes. And you could you could ask it, cook me something good or something like that. You might wind up with uh, steak and bologna instead of steak and lobster. Uh, and it was just it, it did not work out. You see people that uh, that may get replaced, but there are some instances that somebody can be replaced and they don't. They keep them for a reason, for you. And uh, I've mentioned the story before that my friend, Claus Box, and I went to New York City. He was up there on business, and uh, we uh, go to see the uh, uh, Knicks and the Celtics play in the NBA championship. And the Knicks uh, had an advantage or something. Anyway, we go to Madison Square Garden, and we're at midcourt, three rows up. I mean, he got good. Banker got him tickets. And uh, But when we got through, we went to where he had an apartment. He, he kept an apartment, and, and uh, it was like on the 36th floor or something like that. We get on the elevator, and the guy running the elevator was glad to see him. Hello, Mr. Box, good to see you. You know, it's good to see you and have you back. And there were people getting on the elevators about the time that plays had let out. And the elevator filled up. There were probably six or seven people on it. And he knew what floor we were going to, 30-whatever. 
and other people would tell him get known, and, and one of them he knew. And, and but they were going to twelve and fifteen and twenty, and 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 we went straight to our floor. And while we're going up, he said, uh, "I really appreciate you helping my son. You know, give him that job in the summer." And he said, "Well, yeah." He, he, Box told him, "See, he's good. We're going to hire him full time." He was great. And this guy said, uh, my, my, my other son just getting out of high school and he's going to go to Holy Cross. Can, can you uh, uh, help him get a job this summer? And he said, yeah, tell, his, tell him tell his brother to contact my foreman and we'll do something. We're still going up. And he said, uh, my daughter's trying to get a scholarship over at uh, Columbia, music scholarship. You know anybody? And he said, yeah, I've been on a board with the president over there. I'll call him. What's your daughter's name? He wrote it down and everything. We finally stopped. We stopped at the 30th something floor where we got off. And that was the first stop. And I, we got off, and I said, Claude, those people in the elevator were not happy about that. He said, I've told him a million times, don't do that. But he always takes them to my floor first. And, um, you know, I got to think about the guys there to run the elevator and make sure you don't even have to push the button and, the, and to keep bad people out of the elevator or out of the building. And uh, and he, he's helped his son get through college and getting him a full-time job. He's got another boy that wants a job. He's got a daughter that wants a scholarship at Columbia. And this guy's helping you. Hey, I'd stop on the 30-something floor too. You know, but but I, I the next day uh, we went to a bank, Marine Midland Bank, and he borrowed $5 million to buy some property and this was like in 72 or 3, to buy uh, buy some property in a little town north of uh, Dallas that he thought that it was going to you know, really boom and everything, called Frisco. Well, I mean, was he right on that one and uh, wound up you know, doing well with the property that he bought in Frisco, Texas. But the machines are getting where they can think. And the man in charge of artificial intelligence, one of the top guys for Google, resigned last week. And he said, you know, we, we don't know what we've done. We've created a monster, and in five or 20 years, they'll outthink us. And that's possible, but, but I still think they've got a lot, a lot of ways to go. They don't know common sense. Um, University of Texas did a study. And that 50% of the time, artificial intelligence can read your mind. And I don't want it to be anything above zero. You know, uh, I, don't want, I don't want to be able to read somebody's mind. They, they may act like they like me and they may not. And, and that just creates problems. And, and uh, you, you know, how many times uh, when somebody comes by and they leave and the group said, God, that guy's a pain, you know, or something like that, and they read your mind and tell the guy, uh, that could that could be a problem. And uh, so I, I don't think any of us want that to happen. Artificial intelligence is doing a lot in cancer research. And so they're doing some good things. And they're doing some things that in some way are pretty practical. In the hotel where the, you got a robot, you had when the alarm clock went off, you had to chase him down to turn it off. So you had to get out of bed, you know, and he'd stay real close. But you'd get up to move, and you, he, the, he'd, you'd chase him in the bathroom or something to get the alarm clock turned off. I mean, somebody brilliant came up there, but they didn't think through the the fact that it's like a doctor. You know, they they interviewed people from medical school to see if they would have the bedside manner. You know, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about Dr. Cogswell, damn it, told my uncle Clarence he had cancer, and he said, I want a second opinion. He said, okay, you're ugly. You know, his bedside manner wasn't real good. Another thing where artificial intelligence is national and natural language processing. That you can say something in English and ask it to be converted to Portuguese or, you know, Spanish or whatever. And so that, that has worked well. People that travel internationally have to use that and, and use it to a certain extent. There have been a lot of studies on how many jobs would be eliminated. Now, I just mentioned that a while ago. 
But uh, one study says that up to 47% of the jobs could be eliminated. And another study said it's 9%. Well, there's a lot of difference in 9% and 47%. And that, but you just think about cars, you're eliminating drivers for Uber and Lyft and, and all kinds of groups, people. And so there, there will be job elimination, but there'll be other things that'll open up. Society always makes adjustments, uh, but uh, but uh, driving, truck driving, everything. If that came about by twenty thirty, uh, there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people that drive truck, and and they would be out of a job. There is one artificial intelligence company called Chat GPT, and if you have any mathematical problems, they're great. You know they'll they'll solve them real fast. Uh, if you have a long story uh, or a newspaper article, it's a Sunday morning investigative report of the New York Times that's several pages long, you, you can get those summarized real fast. The chat GPT can write emails, but you have to, you have to dictate kind of what you want and you have to kind of get them where they're, they make sense, and then you can use them. And so it saves eventually saves you some time, but at the same time you still have to do every email. So it's not it's not like you're eliminating having to read and answer emails. I noticed this last week, and it surprised me. Le- LeBron James was the highest paid American athlete, and his it was a hundred and nineteen million for one year. And I thought that would be tops, but there are two soccer players, one from Argentina and one from Portugal, uh, that uh, were on up there in the 130s and 120s that made more. You got to think, you know, United States got 370,000, uh, 370 million people. Uh, U.S. has 370 million people. And uh, you look at the rest of the world and you got, you know, uh, 7 billion, 7 or 8 billion. And so soccer being the world game that it is, you know, they're going to wind up making more in, in that regard. But it, it really surprised me. But our athletes, I, I would assume as a whole, make a lot more. If you take not just the NBA, but the NFL, Major League Baseball, and some of these, there's a lot of them making 40 to 50 to 60 million a year. It's good living. One, one story that interested me last week, in Russia, um, in the Ukraine war, Russia is using a lot of foreign mercenaries from a company called Wagner. And Wagner, they have trained mercenary soldiers. And the estimate, there's, there's been 20,000 people die in battle uh, for the Russians, and about half of them were Wagner soldiers. And uh, they're, they're having a hard time getting people that are Russian citizens to get them, you know, the, the uh, description on, on it's from 18 to 65. You know, a guy at 64 or something, you put him out there with a the rifle and say, go get him, big boy. You know, I mean, he's going to have a hard time doing that. And that was a war that they thought would last three days. It was lasted over a year, and uh, they're still having, still having problems. And they've just destroyed Ukraine. Uh, they bombed some of those cities, and and you know we're having a lot of a lot of people in Congress now about whether they vote to give money to Ukraine, and they're afraid that a lot of the money went early, was not properly scrutinized and supervised, and uh, so it, that that's a big debate in Congress at this time. But the the Russians, they are having a difficult time. They should eventually win, but. Uh, you know, you worry about our leadership not being able to work something out. Uh, our our leadership worldwide is down. Pulling out in Afghanistan was was so diminishing uh, to our strength and our leadership. Um, another word that that came out this week that uh, President Biden's going to appoint my friend C. Q. Brown Jr as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Trump appointed him as uh, chief of staff of the uh, Air Force. 
there's been very, you can name them on one hand, very few people that have been appointed by Trump and Biden. But C.Q. Brown's a Texas Tech guy. He uh, uh, is a distinguished alum. He's in the, uh, his dad was a colonel. And uh, he's been in the military ever since he got out of ROTC in high school, uh, in, in college. He's a real leader, and he'll make a, a strong chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff. A lot of people say, well, it, will it change what's going on? As your chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, the president is calling the shots, and your job is the implementation. You also get input, but the president makes the final approval on what your number one goal is, your number two goal, and everything like that. But congratulations to C.Q. Brown. I took him over last year. He was visiting Lubbock. I took him over to talk to the basketball team and told him who he was. He's the number one guy in the Air Force. And you could hear a pin drop. They really listened to him. They were really impressed. And uh, he's a pilot and flew in the Iraq War, and, and uh, he's got a lot of hours in that uh, – but has a lot of common sense. Congratulations to him. I think it's going to be announced sometime this summer. You know, there, there's uh, one of the groups, uh, you know, Dear Abby, and, and that they've come out, some of those groups came out with new rules on weddings and that you don't need to walk somebody down the aisle. You know, used to, there, one, the groomsmen would write, they'd walk the bridesmaid down the aisle, but that, I mean, that's, that's, in the past and you don't put black tie optional on an invitation and i like that black tie optional you know i mean if it's black tie option i'm not gonna wear black tie and that uh no uh, engagement parties are kind of a thing of past because you know it, it was a surprise or you know they and and now you know about half of them been living together for 25 years before they you know, get engaged to so an engagement party, not going to mean much. And, uh, but that's out. I noticed that a study by a group in New York has found that 42% of us make up our bed. You know, when we get up, before we leave the house, 42%. That's not very good. And, that, uh, and only 43% eat any breakfast whatsoever. And, and the one that kind of surprised me, only 59% of the people shower every day. There's another, you know, 30% shower maybe every other day. You know, and there was 1% said they didn't shower unless they started smelling. You know, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to be around those people. It, you know, the NBA, they had a deal that when they started bringing in players from Yugoslavia and everything, they didn't wear right guard or, you know, uh, under Armour it didn't have a, a deodorant attached to their uh, shirt. And, and one of the players said, boy, it just if you had one of those guys, they'd go up for a rebound and just knock you out. You know, they, they hated to see those guys, you know, coming in because they, they weren't accustomed to wearing deodorant. The, the Hollywood writers are on strike. And if I hadn't read that, I wouldn't know it. And I wouldn't care. I don't watch any of those programs. I know a lot of people do, and that, and that's fine. But if they if they go on strike for ten years, it it will not affect my life. And um, I've got a lot of people that listen that, that will probably feel the same way that I, I don't hang around. So oh, tonight, so and so. When I was little, we'd go, you know, tonight, gun smoke zone or or whatever. You'd you'd have uh, different programs for every night. You you only had three channels and. You had it pretty memorized on what was going to be on. But now you've got, you know, a thousand channels. You can watch anything you want to watch. And and some of it's dull. Uh, I, every once in a while I'll be flipping some channels, have a little extra time. I'll see the pawn shop guys out in Vegas. Always like them. The grandfather, the father, and the son, and, and the banner they have. And then the other one that I'll watch from time to time is the storage bins, you know, where they bid on a uh, storage. Uh, they'll they'll have these, uh, somebody will have goods stored in these uh, small little garage-type deals, and they'll be gone so long that they'll sell. And so they knock the lock off and open the door, and you can't go in and look around. You can just look from outside, and then you bid. 
and every once in a while somebody will, you know, hit a home run and and uh and it's kind of comical to to watch them do that. That in the pawn shop, you know, I don't know what that says about me, but uh if I've got extra time I'd look on that. And the other one is is Steve Harvey, uh what what's his family feud. Always like Steve Harvey's one of my favorites and I and I was watching when his facial expressions are worth a million, you know, he'll just he'll just cringe when somebody come up with some stupid answer sometime. But when he was the MC, and I believe it's Miss Universe or Miss World, one of those contests, he said, and the winner is, and he, he announced his Miss Philippines or something, and it was Miss Venezuela. Or, you know, I may not be correct on the, but it's the wrong one. And uh, he handled about as well as you could, but he's a funny guy, and he, he's always entertaining. So, you know, if, I, if I've got some spare time and don't, don't want to think or anything, I'll, I'll watch his family feud. Now, I, I know people that love to watch these, uh, the bachelor, the bachelorette knows. I, you know, I've never seen one completely through it because I just, you know, I mean, they need to spend more money and get better actors and actresses. They're always saying this and that, and, uh, you know, times are changing. Speaking of changing, Kroger's, the largest grocery chain in America, they're doing away with the coupons coming out of the newspapers and daily shoppers. And you can still go online and uh, get some things printed out. But uh, cutting out coupons, it's over. Came to an end. And that uh, that was something that was big at one time. And that peop- there were people that did that for a living for, for other people that uh, they'd give you a bunch of coupons and you'd pay them a certain amount of money. But, I mean, it's, it's popular and it saves people money, but it's gone. Remember the saying for the day, the only person you have to compare yourself against is you. Uh, are you getting better at what you're doing? And are you enjoying what you're doing? This is Ken Hance, best storyteller in Texas. Have a good day.